Adventures by Morse. Carlton E. Morse presents... The City of the Dead, featuring Captain Friday. If you like big adventure, come with me. If you like stealth and intrigue, come with me. If you like blood and thunder, come with me. But first, our sponsor. The City of the Dead. Midnight in October. A night when almost anything is liable to happen. And much already has. Old Joshua Friday, mayor of the City of the Dead, otherwise known as the caretaker of the old cemetery no longer in use, had just been mysteriously shot. The shooting took place when Mayor Friday pulled a bell rope in the little church ruins at the lower end of the City of the Dead. Old Dr. Tuner and the mayor had been led to the abandoned ruins in their search for the phantom toll of a church bell. They found no bell, just a bell rope. And when the mayor pulled it, he was shot. And now, back in the mayor's cottage at the other end of the City of the Dead. Earlier in the evening, Dr. Tuner and the mayor had locked up young Jimmy Parker and the girl, Phyllis Carroll, who had stopped there for aid when their parked car had been stolen from them by gunmen. But that was nine o'clock. It's midnight now, and Doc Tuner had carried the unconscious body of his friend from the old church back to the caretaker's cottage. Is... is he dead? Of course not. Do you think I'd lug a dead body to a cemetery at midnight? How badly is he hurt? Oh, I reckon it's just a scalp wound. Who shot him? I wish I knew, Miss Carroll. I reckon I'll do a bit of telephoning. But you told us you didn't have a phone. Did I now? You most certainly did. Yeah, guess that's just one of those things. But look here. Now, Parker, keep your shirt on. Just sit still and listen while I take care of things. Oh, so that's where you keep the phone. Yep. Long distance, please. Uh-huh. Long distance? Uh, listen, Central, will you get me Skyline 2020? Who is it you're calling? You know in good time. But... Hello? Hello, Captain Friday's office? Yeah, well, is Captain Friday in? Good. Uh, hello, Captain? Uh, say, this is Dr. Tuner. Yeah, Doc Tuner. No, nothing much. Say, I, I'm down with your father in the city of the dead. Yeah. Now, listen, Captain, something's happened to the mayor. No, no, it's not his heart. He's been shot. No, he ain't gonna die just to clip on the head. Yeah, I tell you, if it was serious. But look here, boy. There's something wrong down here. Something wrong, I say. Yeah. Could you come down for a week? Yeah, keep your mouth shut and come down. Good, that's the ticket. And be sure you don't talk. Yeah. Goodbye. Has Mayor Friday got a son? Yeah, Captain Friday, private investigator. Owns his own agency up in the city. And he's coming down here? He is, and he'll want to talk to you, too. When is he coming down? A couple hours. But why can't we call the city? Not until you talk to the captain. <gasps> Dr. Tuner, what on earth is that on your back? My back? Yes, there's a footprint on your coat. You don't say. You know, take my coat off. What kind of a thing made that? Hmm, the same thing that scratched my face. Jiminy Crickets, what a footprint. Did someone knock you down and walk on you? Looks like it. Mm -hmm. Who ever heard of a barefooted man running around at midnight in a cemetery? Well, did he scratch you with his hands? No, with his claws. A man with claws? Well, look at this footprint. That's a human foot, all right, and if those aren't claws at the end of his toes... Oh, well, did you see him? I did not. I felt him plenty, though. Yeah, did he shoot the mayor? Well, I reckon the story will keep until the captain gets here. Hello, that's the mayor. Well, is he coming, too? No, I reckon not. Good sign, though. Oh, I want to get away from this place. Doctor, how long are you going to keep us here? Well, that depends, Miss Carroll. That depends. Would you rather spend your time here or up at the city in jail? Jail? What kind of talk's that? What have we done to be sent to jail? That remains to be seen. We'll just sit right here and wait. Two o'clock. Oh, dear. There he is. That'll be him. Hello, Doc. Hey, Captain Friday, you made a quick trip. One of the traffic boys brought me down on his motorcycle. How's that? Just as I told you, not in the slightest danger. Still unconscious, though. Uh, this is Miss Phyllis Carroll and James Parker. Hi. How do you do? Company, eh? Well, in a way, maybe. Not company? 
What then? Out here. Supposing you sit down and hear the whole story. There's a deuce of a lot of nonsense going on out here. Fire away, but first you're sure the old man's okay. Yes, the wound is hardly a scratch. Just graze him, huh? Mm. Okay. Go ahead with your story. Well, in the first place, there have been indications of marauders in the City of the Dead for the last three nights. Yeah? Footsteps on the gravel. Footprints the next morning. Once the mayor was certain, he saw one down among the graves. Mm Mm-hmm. And then tonight... Well, they heard a scream that had raised the dead, and then someone ran by the house sobbing as though scared out of his wits. Man? Hmm, sounded so. The mayor slipped outside, and pretty soon he shouted to me to open the door, and he brought these two youngsters in. Well, well. And they swear they didn't make the noise. Did either of them look as though they'd been frightened? Mm, No, just nervous. They said they'd just been held up by two gunmen and their car taken away from them. Better and better. What next? Well, after they were held up and were walking toward the cottage here, they say this frightened man that the mayor and I heard ran past him. Did you get a good look at him? No, we got off the road and we heard him come. No, too bad. And then they claimed to have come directly to the house here. They wanted to telephone the police in the city. And Dr. Tuna said there wasn't a phone in the house. What was that for, Doc? Uh, uh, let's pass over that for the moment. Uh-huh. Go on. Well, the uh, mayor and I took it into our hands to uh, well, detain these two young people. Locked them up? Well, yes, in a way. High-handed business. Well, how do we know but what they're grave robbers? Ever rob a grave, Miss Carroll? No, sir. You, Parker? Do I look like a grave robber? There you are, Doc. Looks like you and Dad pulled a boner. Mm -hmm. Well, then what happened? Oh, yes, I almost forgot about the phantom church bell. Don't tell me you got a ghost mixed up in this. Well, these youngsters came in with a story of hearing a bell ringing down at the other end of the city of the dead. Down in the old church? Yes, but the mayor said there wasn't any bell there. This is beginning to have possibility. Well, after we locked up these two, we went out to look around, and I'll be a son of a gun if we didn't hear a bell. Well, Captain, your dad's sort of impetuous at times. <laughs> Thanks after his son. I bet your money he dragged you down to the old church. He did. First up in the balcony, and then back to the old study behind the altar. Isn't that where that old fellow, what's his name, hanged himself? Yes, it is. Well, as we were creeping up on the room, the most ghastly moan you ever laid here to came out of the study. Ah, the ghost. I was ready to come home by then, but the mayor insisted that we'd had something cornered and we ought to capture it. So we laid down on our stomachs and wiggled up to the study door. It was darker than the inside of a pirate's heart. And we were lying directly in front of the door, and the mayor shoved it open. And out popped the ghost. I wish it had been a ghost. Look how it ripped my face with its claws. Oh, that's how you got scratched up. It ran the full length of me, wailing fit to curl your hair. You don't say. It ran out of the building, and the mayor and I jumped to our feet, and your dad switched on his flashlight, and the study was empty. Naturally. But there was a new bell rope hanging through the ceiling. The bell? That's just what your dad thought. He gave the rope a yank, and someone shot him. Yeah. But did the bell ring? I, I blamed if I know. I was so rattled. I didn't hear anything. I, I didn't wait. I grabbed the mare up on my shoulder and didn't look back till I got home. Amazing. Offhand, how do you think Dad was shot? There are no windows in the study, as I remember. No, there ain't. And I'll swear there wasn't anyone in that room but us. Could anyone have shot from the door? No, it had swung shut. And besides, the mayor had his back to the door, and he was shot from the front. Curious, sir. I'm curious, sir. Um, tell me more about this animal that gave you the trouncing. Now, here, look at that footprint on my coat. Does that look like animal to you? No. Barefoot man, what do you know? And look at those claws. I don't believe it, Doc. Mm, that footprint and these scratches are all the proof I want. Then I'm supposed to find a barefoot man with claws, a phantom church bell, a hysterical man, not to mention two auto thieves. More than that, I'm supposed to find out why two law-abiding citizens, one of them my own father, have practically kidnapped a perfectly respectable boy and girl. Mm -hmm. I reckon you'll be just as well off not to look into that bangle very close. Uh, Oh, yeah, and there was something else. You know the mayor's got a sort of a half-wit gardener working for him. Old Lammy Fink? Mm. Is he figuring on this, too? Well, we found his cap down among the tombstones as we were going down to the church. Here it is. The mayor said he saw Lammy wear at home from work last evening, and it looks to me like Lammy was back in the City of the Dead last night. No, not Lammy. He's scared to death of this cemetery after dark. Mm, that's what your dad said, Captain. Now, that's the truth. I know Lammy. He wouldn't come near the place after sunset. Well, then explain the hat. Give me time, Doc. Give me time. I haven't been here a half hour yet. Look here, you two talk and talk. Aren't you going to let us call the city? No, well, what about it, Doc? 
Are you let our young friends depart in peace now? No, look here, Captain Friday. We can't do that. I, I want to talk to you alone for a spell. All right, Doc, if you're ready to talk. Uh, you don't mind if Dr. Tuner and I adjourn to the kitchen for a little chat, do you? Come on, Doc. <laughs> like this, kids. Dr. Tuner has thrown new light on this business. Uh, suppose you tell me, Mr. Parker, who you are, what you do. I'm a student at the University of California, junior year. I see. Living with your parents? No, I have a room in a small hotel. What hotel? In Britain. Would you be missed if you didn't show up for, say, a week? Why, I suppose so. I see. What about you, Miss Carroll? I don't work anywhere. Live at home? With my mother. What's your address? The Brundell Apartments on Jackson Street. Any phone? Franklin 7076. But, but you aren't going to keep us here, are you? Tell me this, Mr. Parker. How did you happen to come down to the City of the Dead tonight? Just driving. No ulterior motive. I mean, besides the moon and the girl. No. Well, look here, you two. You seem to have gotten yourselves into a mess. But no. Yes, wittingly or unwittingly. Now then, you have a choice. Either you remain here for a week and submit to being locked up nights and having a guard at all other times, or else I'll have to take you back to the city and have you locked up. We haven't done anything. Oh, that's to be proven. I can have the police hold you for investigation. Well, I don't understand it. I don't know what it's all about. You can't do this to us. Nevertheless, it's happening. Now then, which shall it be? I, I don't know what to say. I want to go home. Well, that's impossible at the moment, Miss Gal. If you chose to stay here, I'll make it right with your mother. Likewise with your hotel party. Oh, Jimmy. We could get was... out on bail. Not on a held for investigation charge, you couldn't. Believe me, I'd advise you to stay. Jail's a rotten place to spend time. Oh, yes. Oh, please, let's stay here, Jimmy. Well, all right. We'll stay. Good. I'll run up to the city in the morning. Probably get back tomorrow afternoon about five. You, you're going to the city to, to check up on Jimmy and me? Is there any harm in that? No. No, I guess not. That's fine. You two wait here a minute. I want a word with Doc, too. Oh, Jimmy, darling, what have we got ourselves into? Well, get hold of yourself. I knew we shouldn't have come. I knew it all the time. Then the youngsters, Phyllis and Jimmy Parker, aren't so innocent of the night activities as they're pretending. What will Captain Friday have to report when he returns from the city? But first, our sponsor. Tuner, back again. Well, back from the city already? Quick trip, Captain Friday. Yep, sitting pretty. Oh, hello, Miss Carroll. Didn't see you and Jimmy. Did you see my mother? I did the first thing this morning when I got to the city. I left her not the least bit worried. But how did you explain Don't give it a thought. Just settle down and have a good time while you're here. How's the mayor, Doc? Yeah, he came, too, just after you left this morning. He was feeling so rotten. I gave him a mild powder. Still sleeping. Did you tell him you brought me down here? Yeah. What did he say? You know, he growled a little bit, but he's really tickled. He was, <laughs> Old son of a gun. Say, Doc, what time are you going to give us some dinner? Oh, in about an hour, if Miss Carroll here will give me a hand. Why, of course I will. Well, that'll give Parker and me a little time to look about. Like to come along with me, Parker? Why, sure. Good. We'll take a run down among the tombstones. See you later, Doc. It's been a long time since I had a good look at the City of the Dead. Oh, that's so? Mm-hmm. Here, let's cut across this way. Where are we going? I want to look over the ground where the mayor and Dr. Tuner picked up Lammy Fink's cap last night. Did Lammy show up for work this morning? I guess not. I heard the mayor and Dr. Tuner talking about it when the mayor came, too. 
Doc promised to go over to Lammy's cabin and see what was the matter. Did he go? I suppose that's where he went. Anyway, he locked Phyllis and me up about noon and was away for a couple of hours. Yeah. Be careful where you walk and let me know if you find any footprints. Not that you're likely to find any on this graph. Captain Friday, what's it all about? Why are you keeping us here like this? Answer me one question, Parker, and perhaps I can answer both of yours. Well, well, if I can. What were you and Miss Carroll actually doing here at the City of the Dead last night? I told you. See, there you are. You won't play square with me. How can you expect me to be on the up and up with you? But I tell you, it was just an accident that brought us here last night. And I tell you, I think you're lying. Look, just because you're a private detective... Now, now, Parker, don't get nasty. If you don't want to talk, it's all right with me. I'll find out for myself eventually. In the meantime, our relationship can be pleasant or strained. However you want it. You won't find anything out about me. You took the trouble to look me up while you were in town. I did take the trouble. Well? I found you just what you purported yourself to be. A junior at the University of California. Likewise, Miss Carroll told the truth. Well, doesn't that satisfy you? Under ordinary conditions, I'd be willing to give you the benefit of the doubt. These are extraordinary circumstances. In what way? That remains to be seen. Oh, just a minute, here we are. Dr. Tuner said they found the cap just a little to the left of old Lady Gregory's grave. If I remember, that would be right over there. You mean you know every one of these 10,000 graves by heart? <laughs> well, not all of them. I got a pretty good idea of the lay of the land here. You see, when I was a kid, this was my playground. What a curious childhood. Yeah, that's the grave, all right. Now then, supposing you do a little looking around. Exactly what do you expect to find? I don't know. Look here. If Lammy Fink was here among the graves after dark last night for some diabolical reason, and believe me, it would take the devil and a legion of his assistants to get him here, there must have been a reason for him leaving his cap behind. And you expect to find out what took him away in such a hurry that he didn't have time to stop for his cap? No, it would help. Say, don't you suppose the fellow that ran by us sobbing was Lammy, do you? I've been wondering if it couldn't have been. Since I heard about this cap business. Sounds like something Lammy would do. Found anything? No, sir. You? Yep. Rather what I expected to find. Well, well what was it? I, I don't see anything. You don't, huh? Come on, I've come all I've come to see. Let's get back to the cottage. Doc will be having supper for us by the time we get in and cleaned up. But... What was it you saw, Captain Fry? You'll find out soon enough, Parker. Don't push me. I'm not much for going off before I'm primed and loaded. I promise you this much, however. This is going to be the biggest night this cemetery's had in a lot of years. <laughs> you've had your supper, Mayor. Don't you think you better turn in? You look sort of peaked. Yeah, not on your life. I ain't gonna spend much time in bed from now on until I catch the fellow that shot me. Well, that's what I'm down here for, Dan. I'll catch my own gunman, young fella. Yeah, you probably will at that. Now, but look, now that we're all gathered around in one big family, yeah. what do you say to a little intimate chat? Uh, about what particularly, Captain? Well, for instance, what about Lammy Fink? Nothing. What's that mean? I said there was nothing about him. He wasn't home. You mean he's moved out? No, he just wasn't around. Clothes, food, and the likes were all there. Oh. Well, that's something. Maybe Lammy was down in the City of the Dead last night after all. Yeah, don't believe it. Been down to the old church yet, son? No, not yet, Mayor. Trip to the city took most of the day. Did have a look around the place where you folks picked up Lammy's cap, though. Find anything? I did. Yeah, you did? What did you find, boy? Before I tell you, I want to ask Miss Carroll a question. Do you mind, Miss Carroll? Why, of course not. Good. What would you expect to find if you opened the grave? Why do you say that? Why do you look at me like that? Say, what are you trying to do? Suppose you keep out of this, Parker. An asinine question if I ever heard one. Yeah. Perhaps you'd like to answer the question yourself. 
Well, sure. Offhand, I'd say a corpse. Mm -hmm, not a half bad guess. Somebody evidently wasn't quite so certain. Look here, Captain. What are you getting at? That's what I say. Somebody evidently wasn't quite certain just what one does keep in a grave. Uh, what do you mean? Somebody opened one down in the City of the Dead last night. Opened a grave? What? Robbing a grave in my city? By thunder! Dad, 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 take it easy. You know anything about it, Miss Carroll? Why, no. No, of course not. Anything to say, Parker? Do I look like a grave robber? Besides, how do you know a grave was opened? So where the turf had been carefully cut about the edges and then replaced. It was old Ernie Morton's grave, Doc. Ernie Morton's grave, eh? Think of that, Mary. Think of anyone wanting to disturb poor old Ernie Morton's bone. I'll have somebody's hide for this. Thought we'd go down this evening and see whether the ghouls carried Ernie away with them. <laughs> Here's the grave. Yep, this is the one, Mayor. Strip off your coat, Parker. You and I are going in for a little heavy exercise. I'm to help dig? That's the idea. Hey, see here, the sod's all loose. We'll lift it off first, and then it can be replaced. Ah, uh, the ghouls who did this knew their business. That's a neat job, huh, Dad? Don't oh, excuse me, Doc. Oh, no, keep out of your way. It is a neat job at that, eh, Mayor? Yeah, too neat. You take an expert to cut up the sod as perfectly as this and replace it in this manner... Know anyone who could do it besides yourself, Dan? Any landscape gardener could do it. Here, Parker, pile a sod like this so we can fit it back together when we get through. Could Lammy Fink do it? Lammy? Why, of course he could. Yeah. Oh, I thought. But, but look here, son. You can't make me believe Lammy'd come down here and open a grave himself. Hey, listen to that, Captain. Church bell, all right. Yeah. Coming from down toward the old church, too. Looks like I'm going to have to take a run through the ruins tomorrow. Well, go through in the daytime. No godly man would ever go in there at night. The mayor and I know, don't you, Mary? Yeah. Well, enough of the heavy work, Parker. There's a shovel. You work at this end, and I'll work at the head for a while. When we get down a foot or two, we'll have to work in relays. There won't be room for us both. I'm not used to this sort of thing. You're not, huh? What about those blisters on your fingers and the palms of your hands? Blisters? Certainly. You don't suppose I'd overlook your hands, do you? Well, I didn't get them digging up bodies. Look to me as if they were made by a shovel. Suppose they were. Well? Why don't they stop ringing that bell? Getting on your nerves? Yes, it is. What about those blisters? Well, I'm working my way through college, if you must know. So? Got a job gardening. What's the use of lying? It'll only make it worse for you. I'm not lying. Nah. Here, rest a moment. Get your breath. Yeah, you're making good headway. Down about a foot and a half already. Yeah, the dirt's still loose. It's easy to you. Yeah, don't you want me to take a hand at shoveling? No, Doc. You'd creak under the weight of a shovel full of dirt. Mm, thanks for nothing. <laughs> You know, it's been 20 years since we laid Ernie away. Do you remember it, Mayor? Yeah. It was storming to beat the deuce. And there wasn't anyone present except you and me and the two grave diggers and the fellow that drove the hearse. Yeah, yeah, Doc, I remember. One of the grave diggers had to keep bailing out the grave until we could get Ernie into it. Did you help bury all of your patients, Dr. Tour? Every last one of them. Sort of a little courtesy, if you get what I mean. I saw them through life, saw them safely tucked away in the ground, and now I sort of watch over them while they sleep. I'll go to it, Parker. If you got your breath, you take a shift down in the hole, and then I'll follow you. Yeah, sure, but... but Well? Well, suppose I dig into something. That'd be awful. Well, suppose you do. Sing out, and we'll walk them down and take a look. I don't like it. Good full moon tonight. Yeah. I never stood around on one foot in the graveyard at night before. It does give a fellow the creeps, don't it? Getting a molly grubble? Mm -hmm. You begin to see things. Bless my soul, did you hear that? That's it. That's it, son. What do you mean? It's the claw-footed man. Claw-footed man? I don't see anything. There. Over there. There's something white moving. It disappeared. Listen. 
Captain Friday. Captain Friday. What is it? What's the matter, Parker? I dug up something ghastly. His dead arm is reaching up to me. You have just heard the second episode of The City of the Dead, written and produced by Carlton E. Morse. What was it that Jimmy Parker uncovered in the grave? What was the phantom at which Captain Friday shot? What will the old church ruins reveal by daylight? Come with us next week when you will hear the third episode entitled The Body That Walked Off. 